What about the co-main event and Amanda Nunes against the Juliana Pena for the, the bantamweight title? Is this the biggest challenge for Nunes for a while? How do you assess the, the threat? You know, Nunes is uh, like one of the greatest female UFC mixed martial artists, female athletes to ever grace any sport. Mm. She has never really looked in danger. You know, we've seen her knocking out Holly Holmes with head kicks and then coming out and saying, I've done that because that's her signature move. <laughs> we've seen her make great people look average. We've seen her, she's just head and shoulders above everybody else. And for me, I, I believed one of her toughest tests was going to be um, her last fight at this, at this weight class, which was Megan yeah. Anderson. I thought, you know, that height, that size advantage Megan brought was going to be difficult for her. And what we've seen was the lioness just going in and doing her thing. And for me, I think it's basically bringing another bit of meat to the lioness and letting her do her <laughs> thing. I think that's what it is for me. If you look at all the betting odds as well, she's up like, it, it's pretty much going through the rigmarole of just allowing her to get her hands on somebody. I just think she's an um, amazing athlete and an amazing woman. And uh, and what she's doing in the sport is, 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 is amazing. You bring all these eyes to watch her being a two-way champion and just run wild. So yeah. it's, 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 I can't see how she can beat her. I know she's saying her jiu-jitsu is very good and she's saying, I'm, you know, my jiu-jitsu is what separates me. But we've seen, we've seen how good um, Nunez is on the ground. Mm. We've also seen her ground and pound people out. We've seen her rub people out, literally roll them out. Like, you know, you get a rolling pin and roll out a bad door. That's what <laughs> she does with people. She takes them, she beats them at their own game and I can't find anybody in any female division beating her. And I thought the only chance, which was pretty touch and close, was going to be Cyborg many moons ago. And mm. you see me like Cyborg, like just an incredible female athlete. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's relatively young sport, Emma May, but you mentioned it there. Is she is she the GOAT currently? The top of the... the you know, I think I think, I think think she'll go down because for a long time, you know, when the female divisions first get added and with Ronda Rousey, she was also making these massive splashes and her judo was what set her apart for everybody else. Then Nunes, we've got somebody who hits hard, somebody that's technically a very good striker, and she mixes it up between wrestling uh, and it's, it's that's what MMA is. It's not relying on this one thing. And we found that with Ronda Rousey that her one trick pony being her judo was what let her down, and her striking wasn't wasn't able to help her progress and become the great still time female fighter. Whereas Hannah Amanda Nunes, what we've got is the greatest female athlete to ever grace the UFC. Yeah. Penna talks about belief and that she has belief and that's significant. Where does belief factor in this if you're up against someone who's a, a better athlete? Does it help? I mean, it's essential, I suppose, in, in some ways, but how significant is it? You can you can believe all you want, but I think with someone like Nunes, she's already getting beat. You're going to watch her, you're going to watch all her fights against all the other females in the two divisions that she's currently champion at. And you're going to try and you're going to try and find a find holes in her game and compare yourself to these other female athletes like Shevchenko, like Megan Anderson. And mm. you're going to come up short because what we've got here is we've got we've got somebody, we've got a female athlete who's sitting at the top of these two divisions, and everybody else is very good in the divisions, but they're not anywhere near as good as her. And there's just too much of a gap between them all. And that's why she's just going to wait for a long, long time until she decides let's just take a step back. And I think come that time, I think the female division is going to take a hit in popularity um, because the belts are going to change hands a lot of times and we're not really going to have that star like we do with Amanda Nunes. I think she's an ambassador for the sport. Yeah, seven years winning streak. It's pretty pretty incredible. Talking of um, incredible female athletes, we've spoken to Kayla Harrison at Sky Sports on these MMA conversations. She's a two-time Olympic gold medalist, of course, over at PFL at the moment. She's exploring free agency. Do you think she'd be a good addition to uh, to the uh, UFC? It is, but it's one of these things. You can move from another organisation and you can have all the belief in the world as we're speaking about there and you're like, right, I'm going to come across here. I'm going to come from PFL and go to the UFC and I'm going to do that nobody else could do. Why mm -hmm. would you do that? Sometimes conquering the world doesn't work for people. Sometimes yeah. just the king of your country is what you need to do. And for me, any female that wants to do that and wants to jump across different organisations and only come up against 
Amanda Nunes, and for me, I'd be like, hey, I think I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll I think <laughs> I'll just a teammate. Yeah. The train together. I think don't I'll they? just stay yeah. here. I'll just stay here, and I think yeah. that's what we'll be fine. Um, these divisions are going to come a lot more shallower because people are going to, going to be move over. So you're going to have uh, organisations like Bellator, we are a really good females division. We're going to see PFL, we're a really good female division. And what that will do is females will get the ability to change belts, they'll improve their skill. And then we're talking maybe like a year, two years down the line, then you'll have somebody who will be able to take her on a skill match and match her skill and match her strength. But currently, as if you look at all the kind of divisions across all uh, MMA, European, American, mm. uh, the Far East, I think she's just going to dominate them all. And no, there's only one way to kind of find out that, and it's to run like these old school, you know, like a pride. Yeah. Ver- UFC, that's what you need to see. You need to see some. Yeah, yeah, the other organisations have got to level where they deserve that opportunity. I suppose Michael Chandler's done pretty well since coming over from Bellator. Yeah. I know, because that is one of the things about moving from an organisation like Bellator, who is a top promotion in the world, moving over, everybody's like, ah, well, it's not as good as the UFC. Mm. Well, because we've literally just taken a champion and he was able to hang with Oliveira and look like he was going to become the new champion in that division. And not only that, see him look like an absolute winner against Justin Gaethje. So to say that these organisations are obviously different levels below is, I, th- I think it's wrong. Uh, yeah. I, th- I think all these divisions, we, we need them all. We need the Bellator, we need the... PFL, we need the Invictus, you need all these divisions to ultimately make MMA this beautiful sport. And currently, as it goes at the moment, we're doing very well with the sport because we've not got all these different belts where people are dodging each other. Like we mm. find out a lot in boxing, you know, you've got like all these different weight classes where they're like a couple of pounds of a difference. In mm. MMA, we've got like, let's say they're at every 10, you know, we've got 205, we've got 185, and then they go down. Hmm. I think that makes a sport so beautiful. You can't hide from anybody. If you're the guy at that weight, 205, then you're the guy at that weight. And moving up and down weight classes is a, it's, it's, it's a bit of a trick. You know, we've seen McGregor doing it. We've seen BJ hmm. Penn doing it. We've seen other people doing it as well. But I like the fact that there's so little divisions that it stops after happening and the organisations that are there kind of all follow the same blueprint so they can't have like super cruiser off middleweight and all these kind of things. <laughs> they just have people yeah. fighting. Like, but, one guy fights another guy to get another belt. Yeah. I love that. UFC, there's one belt, and if you want it, you've got to chase it. Yeah, you're right. In boxing, they even name the same division, different names. It's either super or, or light middle or whatever it is. Yeah, you've got variations. You've, you've, got, you've got boxer crew, about 15 belts, all for the <laughs> same weight class, and I, I just find it wild. And that's why I like like the UFC and Bellator having the monopoly of this, they're like, right, you're the guys. We have the best of the best. There's no other organisation out there that's, that's coming close to us. You know, right, we've got the PFL, which runs the leagues, which is brilliant, and it's a good way, but it's not the best fighting the best because of the way the, the structure works, where you've got to, it has to do with points. Mm. Whereas in the UFC, you're the guys coming up, you're the guys coming up, let's go. And I, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, PFL is very, it's a nice contrast, more of a season type kind of yeah. attitude to it, knockout, yeah. knockout kind of round robin thing. So how does Nunez win then? You're, you're obviously going for her. Is it is it an early night? Nunez comes out and does Nunez in the first round. She be, she wins by any way she wants. Uh, I think it's going to be power. I think it's going to be heavy shots. That's going to put Pena on the ground and then it's going to be ground and pound. But she's one of these people where she can decide if it's going to be ground and pound or if it's going to be a submission. So it's going to result in heavy shots within the first couple of seconds of this round mm. and then it's going to result in her falling to the ground and Nunez just deciding if it's going to be ground and pound but it's going to be a first round finish for me and I know it sounds really negative but I just I, I've got I've got a t-shirt I've got a fan club I've got a flag <laughs> I've got a lot for Amanda Nunez I just yeah. can't see her being dethroned 